Thank you all for being here. Um, Living New Deal, if you don't know about us, uh, we had a pamphlet over there and some maps. Uh, we should get out some more out of the box. Uh, we are, we've been around for about 15 years. <clears throat> it's a group started by Gray Bracken. And uh, yeah, don't get excited yet. You'll see him. You'll be able to cheer for him later. It, it goes to his head if you do too much <laughs> cheering. And uh, what we do and have done for many years now is document what the New Deal did in the way of public works and artworks. That's the foundation of our work. We map that, we document it and map it. We're up to 18,000 of those sites on our online map. Um, we also run a fabulous website that gets millions of visitors a year, mostly students and teachers above all, but preservationists, historians, and others of all stripes. And we try to educate the American people about what the New Deal did, what it stood for, and how many of its policies were, are still relevant today and could do us a lot of good if we had something like the New Deal again today. Though there's, a, there's some effort going on, but as you know, it's very hard in the current conditions. But then it was hard in the 1930s, so I hope we can do better for a new New Deal. So, please, please do visit our website, look at our map, and enjoy all the information there. And some of our new projects, like our art initiative, uh, being led by our new assistant director, Mary Oaken, who's here, and uh, other really interesting stuff that we're taking on in education, mapping greater Los Angeles, and other really uh, interesting and difficult things. But fortunately, we have a wonderful team, wonderful people, many of whom are here tonight <clears throat> from our group. We have some of our, national, our advisors like Bob Chlebowski, Bob Leininger is here. Bob, where are you? I don't see you. Oh, yeah, I'm getting nearsighted, so forgive me. <clears throat> I won't be the first or last. Uh, Harvey Smith is here, has been with us from the beginning. Stella Lockman, who's been so important to organizing this event tonight, is on our advisors. Barbara Bernstein has been uh, with us for years advising on art. And then we have Lisa Thompson, who runs our website, and Mary Oaken, our assistant director, Mary, wherever you are, who is taking pictures surreptitiously. Um, I also want to recognize Elizabeth Huff, who's here, who does tech work for our events. and. Uh, I think Kurt uh, Feichmeyer is going to be here later. It was a very important part of our team. Linda Herman, uh, Joaquin McLean, who does a lot of our, our publish publications, our beautiful publications. So thanks to all them. Thanks to the National Park Service of uh, the Maritime National Park, Superintendent Paul Dupre, Todd Block, the ranger who led us on a wonderful tour earlier, and I think many other tours. So thank you all. And the San Francisco Maritime National Park Association, uh, Dar yes, led by Darlene, uh, Darlene Plumtree and her team of Rebecca Palm and Kendall. I want to thank them uh, for their help tonight, their assistance and, uh, and helping to run this event, co-sponsoring it. Um, we have also other sponsors. Peter Wiley, who wanted to be here tonight and isn't, and his wife, Jessica uh, Lipnack, and uh, Gray Bracken and Bob Chlebowski, Steve uh, Birnbaum, the SF MoMA, uh, Hafner Vineyards, and Fort Point Beer all contributed to this event. So. Thanks to all of them, and really thanks to the volunteers, especially Susan Ives, who organized all of this. Right there. The diminutive power, power person. And uh, Stella, of course, again, Darlene and her team, and the National Park people. I appreciate everything. So, and we had volunteers. God, I can't forget the volunteers. Thank you for coming and help us hustle around and, and do the setup. And also to our caterers, everyone. So anyway, now I've done my thank yous and we can get on with it. Um, 
So I want to introduce uh, Judge Charles Breyer, who's going to say a few remarks today. Uh, Judge Breyer, I don't think, needs a lot of introduction. He comes from a very old and distinguished San Francisco family who seem to have been all attorneys as far back as he can remember. And uh, he has been on the, on the Superior Court, I mean, the District Court, excuse me, the District Court of Northern California bench is the senior judge there for, I mean, what is it, it's now about 30 years, I believe. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's right. You're only 39, so you couldn't have started younger than age 40, 14. And he also was an assistant prosecutor in the Watergate Special Prosecutor's Office many years ago. I'm sorry if that dates you even more. But he rode here on his bicycle. So if this is a man of eternal youth, uh, I certainly wouldn't have done that. But Anyway, Charles Breyer, please come to the podium. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much. You know, uh, uh, to be introduced as part of an old family, uh, I, I must tell you that, that uh, what did make me feel old was seeing those wonderful performers singing Happy Days Are Here Again, because that was, you know, that was the Democratic Party uh, uh, call. Uh, over, the, over the years. Well, uh, let me talk a minute about my family and only this. Uh, my brother and I took a bicycle trip in, in Europe in uh, about, about uh, 20 years ago. And he insisted on stopping in every town's plaza uh, where the city hall was. And I said, well, why do you want to do that? He said, well, because we're going to build a courthouse in Boston. And a courthouse is a place where the community comes just as a plaza in a, in a medieval town is where uh, people are assembled. And the fact, I never thought, I never thought until the la till I became a judge, uh, the significance of that. Because the significance of that for me is what do you do with the courthouse in terms of displaying art displaying the community, the, the, the heritage of, of where people are from and uh, uh, teaching them some history. So I got very, very lucky through a set of circumstances. I met Bennett Hall, who had a company called Business Images, and he was uh, very interested in reproducing art. The first art that we came across that we w wanted to uh, restore were four murals uh, in, uh, in Eureka, done by Tom Lehman, WPA uh, murals. They were absolutely terrific, and as long as nobody here is here from GSA, I can say it, GSA just let it deteriorate. So we found Ann Rosenthal, who some of you know. She restored those murals. I had to sneak them out of the building at night. They, we put them in a new courthouse, and they are absolutely splendid. But coming to San Francisco, what do we do in San Francisco? Uh, Coit Tower. Coit Tower has a, uh, a magnificent collection of murals, uh, WPA murals. And so Bennett, uh, through the, 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 the assistance of the city, we had to uh, 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 go through the Park and Rec Commission uh, to get him in uh, at a time it was COVID, so everything was closed, but they opened it up for him. He took these wonderful, wonderful, highly digitized uh, uh, photographs of, uh, of the WPA murals. He then printed them out on bamboo. They are four feet by eight feet. They now hang in our courthouse, in our courtrooms. And we have them specially lit. Uh, and then we have a, uh, outside in the corridor, we have an explanation of the WPA project. And, and over the years, and of course the opposition to the WPA project, uh, uh, which I'm sure people will, will talk about, uh, the fact that uh, they didn't like the politics. Certain people didn't like the politics of the WPA project. Uh, it's very interesting 
It shows you life as it was. And I will tell you, because I have jury trials, the jurors come in and they look at those murals and they look at the explanation of what they are and they find it fascinating. They say things to me. Well, I didn't know that. I, it was really inspiring to see it. You see, people who come to a courthouse are there involuntarily, except the judges. <laughs> they don't particularly like the fact that they're there. But I tell them, I say, look, look, look around. Look at the walls. Read, read the explanation. And I will tell you, they are fascinated. So from my brother's idea about, you know, a courthouse is a place where the community can come together and learn, to what we have done in courthouses uh, here. We did it in, in Oakland. We've done it in San Diego. Uh, and uh, I, I, I will tell you that my life is richer because of the WPA murals. Thank you very much. Okay, now I have a tough, I have a moral, a moral problem. Do I tell the judge, the good judge, do I correct a small fact? <laughs> or do I keep my big mouth shut? But as a New Deal nerd, I have to say it was the Public Works of Art project that did Coit Tower, not the WPA, which came a little later. But it was the New Deal, and we celebrate the entirety of the New Deal. And now I'm going to ask our esteemed chair of the Board of Supervisors, Aaron Peskin, to please come up. I believe you have a, some kind of a statement for us. Thank you, Dick. L let, let me start. Uh, by saying that I'm not from here. Uh, I, like many, am an immigrant to San Francisco, migrating a third of a century ago, uh, all the way from Berkeley, California, which <laughs> might say something uh, about me, but uh, my discovery of San Francisco happened when I moved here. I mean, my mother and father would take us here as kids, uh, but I slowly but surely started to find how incredible it was, and along the way had the pleasure of meeting Gray Brecken, uh, who was able to interpret things that I could see but did not understand. And that became my foundations of being imbued with what the New Deal meant. Of course, I understood what the New Deal meant because I went to Berkeley High, but I did not understand the physical manifestations, and we're, we're sitting in one of those physical manifestations, uh, and it was all about the people. This was the people's bathhouse uh, on the people's aquatic park, and the work was extraordinary. Uh, yes, the art was superlative, um, but the level of detail, that sweeping, elegant, round, 1,200-foot pier the municipal pier, the aquatic park pier, uh, was built in record time during the WPA era uh, and is basically irreplaceable. As a matter of fact, uh, it has reached the end of its lifespan and to replace it today, I'm saying this for the benefit of Paul Dupre, the superintendent of the National Maritime Historical Park, because fortunately the people of the city and county of San Francisco don't have to replace it, will cost $150 million. How did they do this thing back then? And the way it was designed allows water to flow through so the water in the people's aquatic park does not become stagnant. I mean, it was brilliant. Uh, the art was brilliant. Uh, and then I came to understand that I lived a few blocks from Coit Tower and what that meant and the Rincon Annex and what that meant. Uh, and Gray, thank you for kind of walking me all through that. And then I got into politics, um, clearly from the liberal progressive side of the spectrum. Um, and I realized that what FDR and company were up against in the 1930s never goes away. As a matter of fact, 
uh, it is back with a vengeance. The income inequality that we are experiencing in the United States of America that is particularly acute in San Francisco with 83 billionaires that mostly spend their money on illiberal causes that have given rise to a neoconservative movement that expresses itself through what they call the YIMBY movement that is not really about housing but is actually about doing the opposite uh, and the opposite has many manifestations. Um, they don't care about income inequality. They are not seeking the great compression uh, that we saw between 1933 and 1981. And that's what we're up against. And just knowing and having the interpretation that the Living New Deal has done is a sign of hope to me and my colleagues and the people of San Francisco. It is not only a backward looking exercise documenting tens of thousands of public works projects and arts projects. It is a forward looking exercise for which I am profoundly grateful. So. So as I remind my wife, Nancy, uh, who gets depressed about this from time to time, because there are good reasons to be depressed about this when 70 plus million Americans would vote for Donald Trump. Um, and yeah, we're up against it, but we have a brilliant roadmap. And for that, uh, and there are a lot of whereases, uh, but I will just hop to the resolved. Um, and Gray, where are you? If I can give uh, Dick Walker and Gray Brecken on behalf of the Board of Supervisors of the city and county on the occasion of extending our highest commendation to honor the Living New Deal for its pivotal role in educating global citizens about the legacy of President Franklo, Fr Franklin D. Roosevelt's New Deal Public Works Program and promoting public spirited values that underpin the New Deal and its lasting contribution to the people of San Francisco and the United States of America. Congratulations. <laughs> We knew he was eloquent, and even his proclamations are eloquent. So thank you very much, Aaron. And now, I think it's time. One more thing. Oh, you can offer it. Oh, please get your sh another glass of champagne if you wish. Just Breyer wants to offer a toast, and this is. A rare opportunity to drink and honor something. <clears throat> Sorry about the correction. No, you I heard you say But it was all part of the New Deal, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. All right, okay. Yes, it was all part of the New Deal. All right. Yes. All right. Would everyone raise their glass? Okay, folks, calm down. I know you're very excitable. New dealers always are. Okay. Well, this evening, we have been talking about the art of the New Deal. Now, don't get confused. It's not a book 
called The Art of the Deal. This is, this is a lesson of history and of humanity, of how uh, a president uh, was able to see how, uh, how the country was hurting and thought that, you know, one of the things you really had to do was to address uh, uh, the art, was to address the soul. And he saw it not only from the point of view of, uh, of the artists uh, who are unemployed, uh, but he also saw it in a larger picture how it could, how it could improve life in America. So uh, I raise a glass uh, to FDR and uh, the deal. The f <laughs> the <fear. laughs> Thank you, Chuck. All right, there we are. You're the best. There's now a new Bobby.